I became a Model Y owner almost two years ago. I believe I made the right choice back then as I have thoroughly enjoyed my Model Y so far and I am also seeing that it's continually gaining more and more popularity worldwide too. But you don't actually need to go that far to find examples of the Model Y's immense success. In fact, a close friend of mine, Ilya, was looking for a new car for his wife and after reviewing all the options on the market, he landed on the Model Y too. So, in this episode, I'll take a closer look at the new Model Y and talk about the changes the vehicle has undergone. Plus, I'll also be touching on its price and hardware changes. Stay tuned! This isn't the first time I've reviewed Ilya's EVs on my YouTube channels. About a year ago, I released a full episode talking about Ilya's Model X high voltage battery degradation, and now I'm taking a closer look at his second EV in the family, the Model Y. I'll start with the elephant in the room here the price. Ilya chose to buy the Model Y outright as he couldn't justify the monthly payment quoted to him on the website. To make an apple to apple comparison, I went to the Tesla website to see what could have been the monthly lease fee for my Model Y if I had to close the deal today. My specs are pretty simple and straightforward, long range, 7 seats, a 4500 down payment and 15k annual miles. The lease payment estimate was $900, which represents a 43% increase compared to what I am paying for my Model Y today. Honestly, I expected a price hike, but this sounds outrageous. In fact, it's not even close to inflation rates. One part of it is obviously that supply chain constraints drive the vehicle price increase by Tesla, but still, there is also a substantial impact from the interest rate, which has significantly gone up this year. If you are planning to access the Tesla vehicle configurator in December this year, you will be seeing this promo in the upper right corner. It offers a $3,750 credit and 10,000 miles of free supercharging. I personally don't remember when I last saw any promo or a special offer from Tesla. Now, knowing that my monthly fee would increase by 43%, I would probably think twice or maybe three times before going forward and ordering the Model Y. The impact is less significant for people like my friend Ilya, who is buying Tesla outright, but there is still a significant percentage of customers who would finance the vehicle purchase. I wouldn't be surprised if the number of orders is also going down these days. Indirectly, this can be confirmed by the fact that there is almost no wait time to have your new Model 3 or Y delivered. While a lot of customers had to wait months back in 2021 and earlier this year. At this point, I'm just going to interject and ask you that you please subscribe and hit the like button and ring the bell if you're enjoying this episode so far. And let's look at the vehicle hardware changes together. I am intentionally focusing on the hardware as all Tesla customers have access to software updates. I've noticed just a few changes. The ultrasonic sensors are missing, and while I can't say it with the same level of confidence, I believe that the radar isn't behind the front bumper either. Those of you following Elon Musk's self-driving saga will probably remember that he insists on the machine's ability to interpret the environment around them by using cameras and computing power only. It's almost the same, he says, as humans to drive, we just need our eyes and brain. This argument comes into play when Elon talks about LiDARs, which are used by all major companies developing self-driving tech such as Waymo and Cruise. However, Elon decided to remove radar and ultrasonic sensors from Tesla's mass-produced vehicles. 
As a result, Tesla's prices are going up with less hardware on its vehicles. It's not exactly what customers would want to hear, nor governmental authorities. There are even rumors that because of external pressure, Tesla will be bringing the new generation radar back to its vehicles, but this might not happen until early 2023. Therefore, I'm just guessing here that the Model Y produced in December 2022 still doesn't have a radar. Focusing for just a little while longer on the exterior, I was hoping to see a bit more progress from Tesla in terms of the quality of vehicle assembly. Body part alignments are still not acceptable and it takes time to get used to closing doors. You just need to push a bit harder, but you wouldn't expect that from a 70k car, would you? In the trunk I discovered this cover which didn't come with my Model Y, but it's not a big deal. I could get one for less than 150 bucks if I wanted to. There are also a few interior updates here on the door specifically. Looks a bit more creative, maybe even more of a premium feel. I've also learned that the new Model Ys have one less speaker, 14 in total, including a subwoofer, but honestly, I couldn't notice any difference in the sound quality myself. Maybe the most noticeable change for me has been a smoother ride. Tesla introduced its so-called comfort suspension earlier this year and I can confidently say it does its job. The ride is much more comfortable. Even if there was a need to compromise a bit of steering precision, I'd still go for it personally. I've heard complaints about the Model 3's and Y's suspension many times from Tesla owners and I even know one owner who went ahead and ordered a new suspension just to please his wife. Luckily, there is no need for that anymore. Thumbs up here, well done. While there are some other minor changes on the Model Y, I don't think it's really worth our time and attention looking into door pocket trims and rear seat dimensions. Therefore, I'll stop here for now and I would love to hear your thoughts on where Tesla is going. Would you be willing to pay $900 monthly for the Model Y? Please let me know in the comments section below and I'll see you soon.